All right, let's talk about cash, baby. We've got a bank rec sim that we got to know. All right, so this is going to be the cash section of the balance sheet, right? That line item that we're so familiar with. And when it comes to the cash section of this exam, the most important focus area is going to be the bank reconciliations. All right, so at the end of the day, we have these adjustments that need to be made. All right, so what we're saying is that there are these discrepancies when it comes to the cash that has been recorded in the books from what is being shown on the bank statements, all right? So the bank statements is just this summary of documentation for how we are reporting our cash inflows and cash outflows on the financial statements, right? So yeah, ideally the books and the bank statements should match. All right, but sometimes they don't, right? There are discrepancies and errors that are made all the time. So we need to know how we are going to approach each discrepancy as it presents itself, right? How is this adjustment going to be made? All right, so if you take a look at the sim here, we see that we have adjustments that are made to the books and adjustments that are made to the bank statements. All right, so we have additions and we have subtractions and we have our subtotals that need to be entered. All right, so at the end of the day, the name of the game is trying to get this cash line item in our books to tie out to what is being reported per our bank statements. Okay, so transaction number one, we see here that the customer's check for $5,300 was returned by the bank because of insufficient funds. This is an NSF check. Included with this is going to be a bank advice that says that there's a service charge that we're getting hit with of $25. Okay, so here essentially what we're saying is that we received this check for $5,300 from our customers, great. But the problem is that although we deposited this check in our bank account, the customer didn't have any money to pay us. Okay, so the check bounced, no bueno. In addition to that, we're also getting hit with this $25 service charge. What's up with that? Okay, so we have this NSF check that we received, and when we did receive it, we told Gerald over in our bookkeeping department that we received this money. Great. Go ahead and record it, Gerald. Bank statements telling us that the amount was never recorded. So this is going to show up, and the bank statements are going to be correct, because why? Because there was a check that bounced, right? We never actually received the money. Okay, so intuitively, what does that tell us? It tells us that the cash balance per the books is going to be overstated. All right, so we need to make an adjustment to our books. Okay, so we're going to tell Gerald, the OG, subtract this out from the books. The money we thought we were receiving, yeah, it turns out the broke folks over there at the company who paid us were no good for the money. All right, so we're going to go ahead and reduce this by $5,300 under our deduction portion on the book side. Same goes for that service charge fee, right? The bank's telling us, hey, this is an NSF check. We're going to end up giving you guys a penalty for this, right? So we are even getting hit with this penalty, right? Even though it wasn't us that were no good for the money, we're still getting hit with this fee. Okay, so our books didn't record this service charge, right? I don't know about you guys, but when my checking account get hits with a service charge, I'm not in the know for like a few days, right? I'm not checking it every day, and I don't see the service charge till Wednesday, even though today's Monday. So if I'm Gerald in the bookkeeping department, I'm not going to know about this until I see it on the bank statements, okay? So what's he going to have to do? He's going to have to go back and subtract this, All right? We got to bring that cash balance down even further. Okay, so taking a look at our next scenario, we have a check that was payable in the amount of $9,218 to Blaze Co., one of our vendors. But it looks like Gerald over in the bookkeeping department recorded this as $9,812, okay? So... Booked it as 9812, even though the amount that we actually paid, which was the correct amount, was 9218. Okay, so Gerald made a mistake. He wrote down the wrong number. Mistakes do happen. All right, they happen all the time. Errors do happen. I don't care what your senior manager at your accounting firm tells you, they do. Okay, so it's all right, Gerald. All right, so at the end of the day, how much was this error? How much are we off by? Well, he wrote 9812, should have been 9218. So the difference is $594. So essentially what he said was we spent $594 more than we actually did. Okay, so our cash balance per the books says that we have $594 less than we actually do. So we need to add this amount back, right? If we say that we're overspending, we need to add this back to reflect that we have more money in this account than we originally thought. All right, so at the end of the day, what's critical to remember here is that we're talking about cash outflow. All right, and we're trying to understand how much money is in the bank account. All right, so the next scenario we have, we're seeing that customer checks totaled $126,200 received by Bunder on December 30th and another one on December 31st for $50,480 and $75,720 respectively. All right, so we see that neither of these checks were recorded on the bank statement. All right, uh-oh, so there was a mess up over at the bank. Somebody's going to get fired. 
but we also have a mistake on our end, right? We see here that the second check from December 31st was not recorded. So this is going to have an impact on both the bank statements as well as the books. Okay, so first and foremost, on the book side, we gotta tell Gerald, the OG, mistake was made. Good news and bad news though. One of the checks was your fault, but the other check was not your fault. All right, so Wendy over at the bank had a bigger mess up. All right, so she forgot to record both checks. Okay, so the 50480 amount was recorded to the books, but G forgot to record the 75720 amount, all right? So G did mess up, and it needs to go back and record this to our books, all right? So 75720 needs to be added back to the books, all right? But that December 30th check, right, the 50480 amount was properly recorded by Gerald over in the bookkeeping department, all right? But neither amount was properly recorded by Wendy at the bank. Okay, so Wendy needs to go back and add these numbers back so that they could show on the bank statement, right? The name of the game is tying all of this out. Okay, so if we're getting audited, we need to show the auditor that the amounts on the bank statements are what are presented in the financial statements. Okay, so 50,480 and 75,720 needed to be added back to the bank statements, and I repeat, only the 75,720, which G did not enter, needs to be added back to the books, all right? So now everything checks out. All right, now we have these listed out checks. Right, we have check number 10302, 10304, 10305. All right, and we're provided with some information related to each. All right, so first and foremost, keep in mind that all three of these checks were recorded and initially did not clear the bank by the end of the year. Okay, but keep in mind the next piece of information tells us that only two eventually did clear the bank while check 10302 was voided. Okay, so we have some checks outstanding, right? This is a listing of the checks that we are sending out. So Gerald over in the bookkeeping department recorded what looks like checks 10304 and 10305 correctly. Okay, so he subtracted these out of cash, but we still need to have Wendy over at the bank subtract this from the bank statements, right? We need all of this to tie out. Okay, so checks 10304 and 10305 need to be subtracted from the bank statements, but what do we remember about 10302? It was voided. Okay, so we need to go back and adjust this to the books, right? This was not cash that actually flowed out of the bank account. So we need to add that 13476 back to the books. All right, so last piece of information. We have a bank advice and we have an additional collection fee worth $50. It says here that the money is in the account. Okay, so you gotta go back and you gotta add this to the books so that it all ties out, right? We collected the cash. All right, and finally we see here per the bank advice that we mentioned is the documentation provided by the bank that we're being charged this collection fee. Okay, so we need to go ahead and subtract this $50 from the books. All right, so now if we compare and contrast, the books and the bank statements should all tie out, which they do.